hello and welcome to the second video where we start to dive into Visual Studio Code in this series. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, just know that there are chapters, YouTube provides chapters and that you can jump around and skip around in the video. So if you don't like this section, look in the description below and you will see chapters that you can jump to. Okay, so we're going to talk very little about downloading Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna assume that you know how to do that. There are other videos on how to do that. For Windows, it's pretty simple. You click here, you get an executable file, you run it and you will have it installed on your computer. A little bit different for Mac, I don't use Mac. And then there are package managers in Linux that you can use. If you probably, if you just type in Visual Studio Code, it'll go out and grab it for you. It's pretty simple nowadays with the RPMs and the uh, pa package managers and so forth in Linux. But when you first install Visual Studio Code, you get this welcome screen. I happen to very much not like this welcome screen. So down here, I always say, do not show, and mine does not come up anymore, but you might like it. And if so, you can start here and you can open a folder, a new file, you can add workspaces. And if this is your recent stuff, if you're working with something, you can click on recent stuff, help and all that. As I mentioned, I like to start clean from a clean slate. And we're gonna go over, first of all, when I make these videos, sometimes they age, they they get older and people are wondering, why is it like this? It will, well, things change. So let's go ahead and do a go to help. And I'm going to show you the version that I'm using at this time is 1.51.1. Okay. That's just for your help. If something seems weird or different than, and looks different than what I've got, then you may have a newer version than I do. So if you come here and do check for updates, there are no updates available. So I'm as good as I can be at this time period of time. Okay. So these buttons over here, I clickable links, whatever you want to call them, are where you're gonna spend the majority of your time and you'll get pretty familiar with them. Actually, this used to have a big bug and now it has a bug and a play symbol. I kind of missed the big bug because it's just easier for me to see and understand that bug. So what we've got here are the Fire File Explorer. We've got searchability, so you can search your own files for things. This is the source control. That's where you check in and out and, and you can, it's a good way to back up your files and share them with other people and check in good. And so if you mess something up, you can always get the latest and so forth. So that's what source control is. This is the de debugger, which I showed in the last video. And we'll be doing quite a bit with a lot of these. And then the most powerful part are the extensions. So let's go back up to the top. So at this point, I don't have anything open. I don't have any windows or anything. We're going to do a open folder and I'm going to go to my videos where I have some samples. I'm just going to select that folder. And right now, I'm going to close everything. Right now, we've got a few files in here, and we'll take a look at those in a minute. But we've, we've gotten this far. We're in our file explorer, and this is the uh, videos folder on my desktop. And you can kind of go around and click on your files. I like how quick and easy it is just to kind of look at your files. But that's all that is, is your file explorer. You can do a new file here. You can new folder. And very, very easy just to do a new folder, say test folder. I don't like spaces, it tends to mess things up. There's my test folder. Then you can of course right click here and delete. All your typical, all your typical file stuff is here. And so we're under one folder with multiple files. And I have some sample files in here to show you. Okay, so as we move down these buttons, very common buttons, don't use this very much. What I tend to do is if you have a file open, I'll hit Control F, and that's almost ubiquitous across all different, including Visual Studio. If you hit Control F and you can do a find, and then you click this and find and replace. So we'll do a find of the word four. I hit enter and it highlights and you just can go up and down. Your typical searches are in there and file searches and so forth. Down here, we will talk about this more la later on, but this is where you would connect to a, rep a repository. And if you go to github.com and create it, an account you can you can save your own files and share them to other people i've had interviews where they've had me code before and so i published to my github account and then when they wanted to see it i just gave them a link to it and then the interview interviewer would take a look at, at my code and they could just click right on the link so the code i made here i could just push it to github and they were able to look i was able to share it and then you can hide and share code that way but we'll talk about that more later now, for the sake of showing things here, I'm going to open a sample file. And now, now we're at the debug, which I showed in the last video. If you want to look at it, here's where you can run and debug and step and you can write things out. This is a very important 
asset for this Visual Studio Code so you can debug your code as you go over and over and fix it and refine it and get it perfect. And then once it's really good, you go back up here and check it in. So then next we've got the extensions. And here's where you can extend and add all these types of different types of things that can do things for you. And the first ones I installed were C Sharp and Python and the, that gets you up and running very quickly. And you can just start debugging Python and C Sharp and so forth. But if you typed in, let's just say Ruby here, it, it goes out on the internet and it knows, it knows all the different types of plugins that are out there. You can even create your own and share them. I don't know if you can sell them or not, but I, I know you can create your own. So if you decided you wanted to learn, there are hundreds of shortcut commands. And there's ways to find out what they are, and I'll show you in a second. But for example, if you wanted to get rid of this over here, you could hit Control B, as in boy, and hide and show it very easily. And when you find yourself doing re repetitive tasks where you want to jump back and forth be between things, it's a good time to start looking at shortcuts. So Control S is my favorite. So if you're working on anything, especially I have this video program called Sony Vegas Studio and it crashes all the time. So I decided I'm, I hit Control S and save. I save all the time because that way I don't lose my work. I was losing tons of work because it would crash on me and Control S is, a, it would work, it works here and it also works in other programs. So tr try Control S, Let, I'll show you how that works. So if I make a change in here, notice it says unsaved here at the top. If I hit Control S, it saves. That's very, very good shortcut and I, uh, you will not, you, you will really appreciate that shortcut when you start to use it. And especially if you lose work. So if you look at the bottom right down here, you will get the, a lot of information. For example, if you want to know what line you're on, you might get an error that says there's an error on line 15. Well, you can come down here to the bottom, right? And you will see the column and the line that your cursor is on. So if you have an error there, you can go there and see exactly which line it is. Uh, you also have the file type here, the encoding type, and you even have the file type that it thinks it is. So if you have a, it's based on the extension, and this is a Py extension, so it thinks it's a Python file. It's pretty cool, huh? Let, let me select a CSS file, the style sheet. It, it knows it's CSS, and the value of that is if you have that, it can color code for you, and it can also help when you debug and run things. So if it knows what type it is, it can help you color color code it. So let's take an example. Right here I have a JSON file that has its file extension is actually JSON. So it knows down here on the right it's a JSON file and it treats it as such which is we can talk about JSON later but it, it knows exactly how to treat this file and how to show the color coding. So if you're coding and you forget to do something like that it knows hey that makes your code look good and it helps you code right because if you have a missing comma or something it tells you about it that's why these file extensions are so important so let's take that same file and remove that file extension and this one happens to have .txt when I first copied this file in here I forgot to give it an extension and it saved it as txt and so it was a txt file it thought oh this is a tech plain text file I don't know what to do with it so I'm not going to color code it that's why let's say Let's remove this here for your benefit. I'm going to delete that. Let's say we wanted to change this like I did. I went in here and I copied and pasted this in and I just hit save and I forgot to give it a file extension name. So let's rename it JSON. And now it knows how to color code it. It knows how to treat the file. And that's why these are so important. And here's an XML file, which happens to be the same same exact information as here. I got a sample off the internet and we've got an XML file here and it knows how to treat it. Now up here at the top, which this will change quite a bit. It happens to have the file name that you're doing. I'll click here, sample.py and then video. So there's a lot of ways to get information. And then if you happen to have a really long file like this one, it has this mini map over here, which it's a little weird. I don't find it that useful. Maybe if it was a little bigger, it's perhaps useful. Maybe I just need to spend some time with it. But if you do this mini map, you might be able to, if you know there's a, some pattern down here, you might be able to just, instead of doing this type of scrolling, you can come over here and go, oh, I know, I know I need to go right here because that looks like a pattern right here. There's a lot of patterns when you do programming and you'll know, you'll be jumping around and using patterns like that. 
while you're coding. And then as we revisit, I'm going to clean this out. These come, this is your terminal down here. And the easy way to get to terminal, I just do this because I forget the commands. I go to terminal, new terminal. And notice that almost every command, when you click on it, it tells you the shortcut here. This one's a little weird with control plus shift plus apostrophe, right? Now, notice this tells you here how to split the terminal, which I just happened to learn. So I'm going to do a control shift five, control shift five, and look at that. Now you got two terminals. You can have this one and that one do two different things. If you're doing maybe git over here and file stuff over here, and one of my favorite commands is I always do clear. I like to start with a clean. I like my environment very clean, as you may know. Now the question is, how do I get rid of that? All right, terminal, new terminal. Okay, if you want to know more commands, go here, go to File, Preferences, Keyboard Shortcuts. Here's where all your shortcuts are, and here's where you're never going to remember all these. If you do, you're a genius. You should probably be doing something other than programming because you, you can do better than that. Um, but anyway, here's where you can go, and I think you can even change your shortcuts. If you want something else like that last weird one, you can change them. So find your shortcuts. Control B plus many other commands. And of course, you can come out here to Visual Studio Code. I just Google command line. These are a lot of the uh, things that you can type in from the command line. And it is almost also infinite as well. I tend to have memorized mostly the git commands, which means checking files in and out, git, pull, push, commit, all those kinds of commands are the ones I use the most. All right, everyone, thanks for staying tuned with me. A new video will be coming out soon, and I will put it in a playlist so you can watch them all in order, however you choose.